crazy that there can be so much in so little. Hi Internet, I'm Steve and welcome to Raffo. We're hitting the end! This is the final video delving into the Cosmere connections of Oathbringer. If you've missed any of the other installments, they're linked right here. Now jumping right into part five. We start off strong with Dalinar's flashback visit to the Night Watcher. There's a lot here. Felt, the spy for House Venture with the long drooping mustaches in Mistborn Era 1, is with Dalinar on his way to the valley. There's some very clear hints to his world hoppiness in this. Dalinar suspects he has some shin blood in him because of his eyes. He visited the Night Watcher before, but didn't actually meet her because she doesn't like foreigners. And he's a little more foreign than Dalinar. Dalinar goes in, sees an almost reverse gold vision of him conquering Roshar, and then meets the Night Watcher, who calls him both Son of Honor and Son of Odium. More surprisingly, she offers him night blood, a blade that bleeds darkness and cannot be defeated. He wants forgiveness, which confuses her, until Cultivation herself comes out. We know that she's a dragon, but she appears as a brown-skinned matronly woman in a sweeping brown dress. She hasn't personally spoken to a visitor in centuries. This was five and a half years ago, and Lyft went to the valley probably about three years ago. She gives him a careful cultivation, a pruning. In doing this, I provide for him a weapon. It will do me well to have a part of you, even if you ultimately become his. It seems Cultivation expected Dalinar to join Odium, or is she talking about something different? The next morning, we meet Felt's wife, Molly. Not sure what planet she's from, but she can read and write. Felt heard of a man who visited the Night Watcher, and from then on, lashed people to the sky whenever he touched them. Felt is the first one to say Evie's name to Dalinar, and now we know why it's shh in the way of kings. Back to present day, Dalinar sees the Everstorm approach Thalen City. We're in the Sanderlanch now, folks! And honestly, because of that, most of the action is focused on right now. I'll tell you the bits that connect, though, since you were too distracted by the amazingness when you read it. Yasna finds Renarin and sees his spren. Her notes on the stump describe typical Truth Watcher spren appearances, seen in Edge Dancer, and his is different. Venli's an interpreter, that's what I do every day, and does an excellent job at cultural mediation. Odium, using the thrill as a sort of catalyst, allows fused souls to bond to Amaram's army, which is new. Kaladin gets ready to fight the Fused at the Oathgate, remembering moments from Way of Kings and Words of Radiance. The Fused seem to have less control over the surges, requiring more time to build up lashings, unable to vary their speed as efficiently as Cal, though they fly with unenviable grace. Shallan chats with the Oathgate Spren, who say they are locked by word of the Parent, presumably Honor. Zeth and Nail watch Amaram's army turn and he chats with Nightblood, mentioning Vivenna. Cal leads the Fused on a merry chase. He's more efficient at using Stormlight now, having progressed in the ideals. Lyft makes it to Dalinar. Do you have a weapon? Nope, can't read. Perfection. She's got a Windle Rod instead. She takes off to steal back the King's Drop, and Odium walks up. He tells the Thunderclasts not to break the Oathgate, but if they do, it can be rebuilt as long as the gemstones are intact. Are Oathgates just giant fabrials? Adolin goes against a fused, knife against spear. He remembers Zahel's training, which Yakimov refused. Ironically, Yakimov was brought down in the disadvantaged duel by Kaladin with a knife. His attempt doesn't go much better. He takes a spear to the gut, but is saved when the spread of his sword attacks the fused from behind. <laughs> Shallan manifests the mind of a wall into Shadesmar. It feels a lot like soul casting. Lyft is traversing the battlefield being awesome and looking real deavy doing it. The Night Watcher promised her she wouldn't get any older. She gets slapped by a thunderclass, then Zeth cuts it in half. Ash, acting on information from Mraze, finds Talm. She remarks on the red eyes of Amaram's force, the color of corrupted investiture. Talm, again, was not supposed to be a herald. Renarin's looking at pretty stained glass. Gliss says, I will give you my sorrow. Odium sends Dalinar through his own flashback chapters. Glory spren keep on showing up. Zeth recognizes Nightblood doesn't understand what destroy evil actually means. He's lashed himself slightly upward, approximating Wax's constant weight storing. The Fused eventually snags the sheath and uses it to block. It's made of aluminum. Nivani reversed the polarity of her pain reel and rescues Queen Fen. Odium destroys Dalinar's book. That's how you know he's truly evil. It's not quite killing a puppy, but for book lovers, which I assume is the bulk of my audience, it's pretty close. 
Had to be an antique, handwritten. One of the few box at following a human, and Odium threatens to reclaim that which gives persistent life. So Odium is directly fueling the fused returns, somewhat similar to how Kelsier stuck around because of his tie to preservation. Amaram gets an amethyst to swallow, which is the Will Shaper Pole Stone. I wonder if that's significant. Amaram's apparently been in communication with Odium for a while, too. Kaladin thinks of all the people he hasn't saved, that he couldn't save, and then proceeds to not say the next ideal. Rather than striking him down, Yasna hugs Renarin. He can be wrong. Thank goodness. Dalinar realizes what he's been missing for years. The answer to the question his brother asked with his dying blood. The most important step a man can take? The next one. Whatever it is. He speaks the third ideal of the Bondsmiths. I will take responsibility for what I have done. If I must fall, I will rise each time a better man. He follows through on the mandate to unite them, and does this. Not sure if it's significant, but for specifics, his left hand grabs Shadesmar, and his right hand the spiritual realm. He hears a voice from the spiritual realm, and receives the forgiveness he's hunted for for years. I am unity. Odium screams, WE KILLED YOU! Who is we, and who is you? Probably Odium and the Fused versus Honor, but Still, Taln gets lucid. Teft swears the second ideal of the Windrunners. Yasna uses offensive soul casting again with devastating efficacy. Dang, she's good. Brightness? Sorry. Brightness? Sorry. Brightness? When the perpendicularity opens up, something no Bondsmith had ever done before, Nightblood finally lets go of Zeth and Lift. Lift considers Swordnimi a she. Where the black tendrils had been, their skin is streaked with gray. Significant. Seven Radiants, Windrunner, Skybreaker, Edge Dancer, Truth Watcher, Light Weaver, Else Caller, and Bondsmith, though Dalinar expects three more. Taln would count for a Stone Ward, Ash has been kinda Dustbringer-y, since we can't very well have Malata, and Venli is a budding Will Shaper. All orders are actually represented at the Battle of Thalen Field. Amaram swallows a rock and dual wields the two shard blades that have had significance in Kaladin's life, Dalinar's sword and Helleran's. Ready. Fight! Shallan's light weaving, and possibly a bit of soul casting, an army of all the people she's capital C connected to over the years. Yalb, her brothers, her mother, I wonder if someone on the battlefield might recognize her. And finally, Veil and Radiant. Others were ready to come out, but that wouldn't have been a good idea for Shallan's psyche. Next book. Adolin is trying to catch up to Yasna. She's fine. And he sees her dismissing Shardplate. She does this. Cal's fighting a crystal-spouting Amaram while also trying to protect Dalinar. Getting close to the thrill makes him nauseous. Sounds similar to the two responses people have toward Nightblood. Bloodlust and puking. Yasna muses on atomic theory, though she'd probably say axial theory, while soul casting steps up the wall for herself. She's moving individual atoms. Sounds a lot like microkinesis on some level. Zeth hucks the king's drop away, and Nightblood uses a new word! Pretty deevy. For a sentient sword that usually can't remember what year it is, learning new vocabulary seems pretty big. Amaram outgrows his plate and fights Kaladin barefoot, using surges he's not supposed to have. Cohesion, friction, eventually division and gravitation. Adolin goes to fight a thunderclast, and his sword finally tells him her name, Mayalaran. Mayalaran? Ma- Maya. If you recall, Maya's a cultivation spren, same as Windle, and the way Adolin fights in this chapter is distinctly edge dancery to me. Jumping through windows, sliding over tables, he even saves a random kid, remembering someone who was forgotten. Venli flees the battle, the rhythm's going crazy for her. She becomes the first listener radiant, Tambor trapping the void spren in her gem heart. <laughs> That's cool. Adolin pulls off the move he was practicing in Words of Radiance and throws his shard blade through a fused. He gets flicked by a thunderclast, and Maya rematerializes after eight heartbeats. He gets pushed through a roof, and then feels Maya brush his mind, another thing that's never happened before. Renarin shows up, and gives Adolin almost the same talk Dalinar gave to him during the Chasmphine hunt in Way of Kings. The Thunderclass gives him a high five, which doesn't phase him. So cool! Not only has Zeth trained with all of the Honor Blades, or at least 9 out of 10, he's also gone ice skating. I want fan art of that. I want- I need fan art of that. Kaladin eventually busts open Amaram's cuirass and sees a large violet crystal pulsing in his chest cavity. If you know, you know. If you don't know, 
I'll tell you later. Renarin somehow banishes the spren of a thunderclast with Stormlight. Yasna pulls Shallan, Radiant, out of the battle and gives some soulcasting tips. Know your audience. Renarin is probably no longer epileptic due to Stormlight, but is still definitely autistic. And that's okay. That's as it should be. I'm excited for my video about that, coming soon. Teft arrives with reinforcements. Dalinar old yellers the thrill. Rock old yellers Amaram. Dalinar shows Navani the trapped Nergal in the King's Drop. It reminds her of the strange sphere that Gavilar had. Vale notices that Kaladin lost his boots. Zeth talks with Nail, who acknowledges his own craziness, claiming Ishar is the only herald that survived with his mind intact. Uh-huh. The God King Tezim would like a word. Zeth says his third ideal, the increase in stormlight causing snow to crystallize in the air, similar to Kaladin's frosty glyphs. In his very next sentence, he states his intent for the fourth, cleansing Shinovar. Nail promises to return and train Zeth on the use of division. Shallan is going through the city looking for Adolin, and sees Kaladin doing his best Batman impression, brooding from up high. He's a silent guardian, a watchful protector, a opposite of dark knight, radiant knight, knight rate, you get it. She finally, officially, chooses Adolin, and they're adorable. Cal has found a nice rock that changes colors when you get it wet. First time we saw one of those was back in Way of Kings. Probably not the same rock, though with Brandon, Kaladin struggles with the difficult and very real consequences of historical colonialism. There are no good answers. Dalinar and Teravangine have a discussion in Taln's temple. The King of Yakavad admits to having a herald in his employ, Dova, who is actually the herald Batar. Good thing they didn't kill her when she first came to warn of a coming desolation. He confesses to Dalinar his part in the political machinations and assassinations of recent years. Moash earns Yezrian's honor blade and a new name with the killing of Yezrian. Vire, he who quiets. He's numb. The Lopin shows off one-handed skills and accidentally swears the second ideal, Frosty Glyph and everything. The Stormfather's got a bit of cheekiness to him. Ash and Taln feel Yezrian die, for real this time. Yasna's got sketches of the Heralds, given by Hoyd, who Ash calls Midius. Scar and Drehi are okay! As well as Red, Ishna, and Vatha, and blessedly, little Gavinor, Elokar's son. So Adolin isn't king. Teravangian meets Odium, and it's big. Odium's impressed with the diagram, done without manipulating fortune or the spiritual realm. Then again, he sees a lot more. Except for where Renarin's concerned. Odium promises to spare Carbranth and its citizens and their spouses. So in order to save Roshar, we just need to have a massive wedding. Speaking of, Adolin and Shallan are gonna finally get married. She and Dalinar do their special holographic map trick again, and Adolin admits to Dalinar that he killed Sadius, and also that he doesn't want to be king. But why have a king when you can have a queen? Wedding time! Shallan gets a bunch of wedding gifts, including boots from Bridge 4. Mraze keeps the promise he gave at the end of Words of Radiance, and her brothers arrive in Erythiru. Erythiru. Whatever. Dalinar starts writing his book, with Oathbringer on the wall. Rock technically won it, but he gave it back to Dalinar, repaying the bridge crew's debt with the very same sword. Dalinar closes his eyes and feels the warmth of a distant, unseen light. We have received zero confirmation as to what that light could be. But I have some theories. Theory. I have one big, huge theory. Epilogue! Wit travels through the rubble of Kolinar, quietly rescuing refugees. If Race knew he were there, leveling the city on the off chance it would kill him would be worth it. Oh dear. If Odium destroying a city uncovered a large cache of perfect gemstones still infused with stormlight, then race raises and raises rays. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hoyd uses quite the array of powers here, mostly tied to breath. Healing, life sense, at least the fourth heightening, and awakening a ragdoll with a really obscure command, which turns his coat gray. He meets a man named Cobb, confirmed to be a different Cobb than the Coachman Cobb in Bands of Mourning. He once shared a dance with one of the Fused, thousands of years ago, who didn't recognize him. He makes his way to the section of the royal palace where Elhokar was killed. Elhokar, who was seeing cryptics back in Way of Kings. Why were the Fused so determined to find it? Regardless, even though Hoyd could already use Yolish lightweaving, he's now also a lightweaver, probably because their ideals are so fluid. 
And that's Oathbringer! The Ars Arcanum, as always, had some good tidbits. Ten levels of void binding, different types of fabrials, comparison of Rosharin, Selish, and Yolish light weavings, and most incredibly, a discussion on mechanical investiture access, drawing parallels to what we've seen with the metallic arts in Mistborn Era 2. Thank you for watching! Wow, that was a lot. My original research notes for this were a full 20 pages long. I dug through a whole lot for these videos, but there's so much that mattered. Thank you, Doug and Matt, and the rest of my patrons on Patreon. If you found these videos useful, consider joining them in their support. I'm approaching my research for the next Cosmere Connections differently, just doing a full reread and taking notes, rather than trying to skim through page by page. So I've got a lot to read and find out. Oh, sorry, Billy. Oh, gosh. Part five, part five. There I have found part five.